Good morning. Welcome to the Wax Wake Up for Thursday, June 1st. I'm Christy Matino. Our top story this morning, the House passed a debt ceiling bill just days before the expected default, voting Wednesday night to raise the debt ceiling and marking the first step towards avoiding economic catastrophe, just five days before the Treasury's deadline for default. Lawmakers easily passed the Fiscal Responsibility Act in a 314 to 117 vote, a bipartisan compromise that was created by Speaker Kevin McCarthy and the White House. McCarthy took a victory lap Wednesday night after the vote, after months of blaming Biden for not reaching a deal sooner. Tonight, I hope we proved it to you again, that we put the citizens of America first. And we didn't do it by taking the easy way. We didn't do it by the ways that people did it in the past by just lifting it. We decided that you had to spend less. But House Democrat leader Hakeem Jeffries has previously said the blame is not entirely on Biden. These Republicans, they're going to say that Joe Biden refused to sit down with them. That's a fake narrative. Now with House approval, the legislation will head to the Senate, where it could take days before it's passed. Biden will then sign the bill into law. And reporters ask National Security Council spokesman John Kirby why President Biden won't call Putin a war criminal, despite the American government and allies giving him that title. Washington Examiner reporter Hasten Willis tells us more from the briefing. The White House was pressed today on why President Biden does not refer to Russia and China as evil regimes. But according to Admiral John Kirby, the situation is not so simple. It's not a simple question, James. It's a, it's a criticism that you're posing as a question. You'd like to see us uh, put a label on, on these two countries, and President Biden just doesn't conduct foreign policy that way. I think, go look at the national security strategy. Go look at the national defense strategy. Take a look at anything that the president has said over uh, his time as commander-in-chief about Russia and China, and you'll, and you'll see that we are speaking pretty plainly to the American people and to those countries and those leaders. Former President Trump expressed similar logic during a recent town hall saying that if he called Russian President Vladimir Putin a war criminal, it could imperil diplomatic efforts. At the White House, I'm Haston Willis with the Washington Examiner. And the Senate approved a procedural vote to advance a Congressional Review Act resolution that would shut down President Biden's plan to forgive up to $20,000 in federally held student loans. The Senate approved a motion to advance to a final vote on House Joint Resolution 45 in a 51 to 46 bipartisan vote. Senators Joe Manchin, Kristen Sinema, and John Tester all joined Republicans to advance this bill. Republican Senator Joni Ernst, along with other conservative lawmakers, argued that forgiving the student debt would only add to the national debt. President Biden has to stop this. And if he won't, well, we will. And I am really proud to be able to co-lead an effort to overturn President Biden's socialist student loan transfer program. This bill now faces a final passage vote on Thursday. It will then head to Biden's desk with the president promising to veto it. And that's the news on the Wex Wake Up. Be sure to follow us online and on social media so you stay in the know of all the headlines turning in politics.